Welcome back to my video series where I show you everything you need to know to go from a pile of parts on a desk to a ready to fly quadcopter. This information is all out there on the internet somewhere, but I'm pulling it all into one playlist every single step for a total beginner to build and fly a quadcopter. In this section, we are going to create a new model in our radio and we're going to bind our receiver to the radio. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Like I said in the intro, my goal with this video series is to give you everything you need to know, all the steps to build and set up a quadcopter and then be able to go fly it. And that's why there's a playlist in the video description. If you're coming in in the middle and you're like, oh, what's going on here? Check the playlist link out in the video description. You can start at step one. There's links to all the parts I'm using, all the products. You can follow along with this exact setup. Um, but there's a, I have to make a tiny exception today to that goal. And here's the reason why. Because there are so many different radios out there that you could have. And I can't show you how to set up every freaking single one of them. That would just be impossible. So we're going to be working with the Jumper T16. And here's the good news. The Jumper T16 runs a piece of firmware called OpenTX. It's like, you know, your computer runs Windows, right? And it doesn't matter if you've got a Dell computer or a compact computer or a... I'm old. Remember compact kids? It doesn't matter what computer you've got. As long as it runs Windows, you kind of can use it. Or Mac OS if you're into Macs. And OpenTX is like that. We're going to be working with this exact radio, but the steps I'm going to show you are kind of the same for every OpenTX radio. The menus are the same. The settings are the same. Sometimes, like, a different radio will have a smaller screen. So, like, instead of having a big color display, you'll have just, like, a text display. But if you don't have this exact radio, as long as you've got an OpenTX radio, the steps I'm going to show you should be the same. However, I picked this radio because I think it's a pretty good radio for the for the money. It's a decent radio to start with. I would, I mean, if you can, just get this radio and follow along. Okay, let's do it. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is make a new model for this aircraft. And I'm going to do that by long pressing this jog wheel. And I'm going to hit Model Select. And then you can see I've got a bunch of different models in here for different quadcopters that I fly. You can you can fly more than one quadcopter on the same model, but just to keep things simple, especially if this is your first build, we're going to create a brand new model and we're going to start completely from scratch. And we're going to do that by long pressing the jog wheel and hitting Create Model. And we'll create a brand new model from scratch. It's going to ask us if this is a glider or a plane. Your radio may, not all radios will ask you this. If you get this, just hit the, uh, the return or the back button and skip that. We're going to set it up from scratch. Now that we've created that model, I'm going to press the return key to get back to the main screen. And I'm going to press the model key. And actually, you have to long press it until you see the model setup screen. Now, I've gone back and forth on just how in-depth I want to make this build series. I kind of want to use this build series to showcase a whole bunch of cool things that you could do, not just the bare minimum it takes to get you in the air. So I want to show you a couple tips and tricks that maybe are not absolutely necessary, but that you're probably going to be glad you learned going forward. And the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is we're going to change the model name here. We're going to rename the model. I'm going to do that by clicking the jog wheel one time. And then let's name this. We'll just name it Tyro 119. So I'm going to scroll PQRST and I'm going to click one time to go to the next letter. TWXY. To get a space, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left and we'll get a space. And then one, one, all the way to the end, 119. Um, and there we go, we're done. If you make any mistakes, you just have to hit hit exit and back out and then do it all again. So if you made a mistake, you just back out, you click one time and then you go click, click, click and fix the letter that you need to fix. The other trick here is if you want to change between lowercase and uppercase, you long press and it changes between uppercase and lowercase. Now you can actually do a lot of this stuff using a PC application called OpenTX Companion. If you're sitting there going, well, why can't I just type it with a keyboard? You can on the PC, but using OpenTX Companion, we're not going to, that's a pretty deep subject that I think is a little too much to go into in this tutorial. So we named it, 
we're going to scroll down and the next thing I want you to do is I want you to turn on extended limits. You're going to want to do that basically if you're working with an airplane with servos you may not want to do that but for basically all quadcopters you want extended limits on and then we're going to come to this section internal RF and we're going to change that mode from off we're going to change that to match whatever protocol receiver that we're working with. Now the radio that I'm working with is the uh, the Jumper T16 that has the internal multi-protocol module. And that's probably what you've got too. If you have one of the very early Jumper T16s before they had the internal module, then you may have a multi-protocol module here in the back bay, in which case, instead of using internal RF, you would use external RF, which is just a little bit lower down in the menu. The mode that we choose is going to depend on the receiver type that we've got. So we want to be in multi-protocol mode, and then our sub protocol is going to depend on what receiver we've got. So for example, so for a modern FlySky receiver, you're going to choose FSky 2A. That's the protocol for that. For a Spectrum receiver, you're going to choose DSM. And then you're going to need to choose either DSM 2 22 milliseconds uh, or 11 milliseconds. And that's going to depend on what protocol you're basically. If I were doing it, I would just do a trial and error and wait for it to bind because I'm not actually 100% sure which Spectrum receiver uses 22 and which uses 11 milliseconds. If you're doing FreeSky, like we are, I'm, we're going to choose FreeSky and D16, and I actually want you to choose D16 8-channel. Using the 8-channel version gives you only 8 channels, which is still way more than we need, but it means that you get a little bit better latency on your control link. I would suggest doing D16 8-channel. And if by chance you're doing Crossfire on this build, instead of using the internal RF, you're going to leave internal RF off, and you're going to go down to external RF, and you're going to choose Crossfire. Okay? But we're not going to do that because we don't have a Crossfire receiver on this one. Before we go, there's one more thing that is very, very important to do, and that is to set the failsafe. Failsafe is what the receiver will do if you like lose your RF link for some reason, like because you flew out of range or because you, I don't know, just battery died or something. And it's very, very important that failsafe be set right. Otherwise, your quadcopter will fly away to the land of lost quadcopters when failsafe happens and you'll never see it again. That's the best case scenario. Um, what you need to do with a FreeSky D16 protocol receiver is you need to go right down here. You can set it in the radio. And notice it says failsafe mode not set. So we need to change that. And what we want is no pulses. That basically has the receiver shut down and lets the flight controller handle the failsafe condition. If you are not using a FreeSky D16 receiver, then there will be some kind of a failsafe configuration for your receiver type, and you will definitely, absolutely must figure out how to do that before you fly your quad. I'll show you before we get to the end of this series how to test that failsafe is working correctly before you fly. And the next thing we're going to need to do is bind the receiver to the controller. And the, the way it works is that each controller needs to control the right quadcopter. So if you're out there flying and you got five of your buddies flying, how does the receiver know which of those signals that's going out in the air is actually the one that it's supposed to listen to? And binding is the way that it does that. Um, we're going to need to select a receiver number, and if this is your very first model, you would select receiver number zero. As you create new models, you would then increment the receiver number for new uh, models, and what that does is that prevents you from accidentally having the wrong model loaded in your transmitter when you go to fly this quad. So this is the Tyro 119, and it's going to get receiver. Now, the last receiver number I used, I believe, is two, so we're going to change that receiver number to three. You can just leave it at zero if this is your first model. The binding process for most receivers is pretty similar. Most of them are going to have a bind button. It may not be labeled like this one is, but when you see that little button on the receiver, that tells you that's the bind button. And the way it works is typically that you hold down the bind button. It's a little hard with these little teeny buttons to actually feel that you're holding it down, but you can kind of feel it, especially through heat shrink. You, you can kind of feel it depress. You hold the button down and then you plug in the battery and there's an obvious problem there which is that you're squeezing it with one hand and you're trying to plug the battery in with the it really kind of it helps to have a friend you're just like hey will you plug this battery in for me while i hold the button down um you can do it but i actually have this little box here which has an on off switch and i use it for binding so basically i plug the battery into the box i turn the quad off and then i hold the button down and i flip the switch 
Um, I'm kind of tempted to do it the hard way. Now, if you're not sure whether the receiver is in binding mode or not, and if this is the first time you've done it, you may not be, just plug the receiver in, plug the quad in without holding down the bind button and look at what the LEDs do. So we got a blinking red LED and the green LED is off. Now, they're gonna do something different when they go into binding mode. So it's tempting to use a tool to press this down, like a screwdriver blade or something, but it's actually really easy for these little film buttons. It's really easy to damage them. So I'm gonna hold down this button with one finger, okay? And then I'm with, with the other hand, I'm gonna plug in the battery. There we go, got it. And great. You can see here that now the red light is not blinking and both the red and the green light are on solid. Just the fact that something different happened is kind of our little mental confirmation that we're in binding mode. Different receivers have different blink patterns, but basically I just eyeball what happens when it's not held down and then I just want to see anything different happen when it is held down. Next, we're going to highlight bind right here and we're going to click the jog wheel and we should see this begin blinking typically is what will happen to indicate that bind has occurred. Oh, channel one through eight telemetry on. And there you go, the red light starts blinking, we've bound. Now, if you've got a different kind of receiver, I have some tutorial videos that I'm gonna link down in the video description. If you need to bind Crossfire, I definitely have a video for that. And if you have one of the newer Spectrum receivers like the SPM4649, um, I have videos on that. The SPM4650, the newest Spectrum receiver, actually has a bind button. And it kind of works just like I showed you there. Crossfire's a little bit different. Crossfire, you can actually press the bind button after you power it up. So you don't have to like have three hands to do it. Brilliant, amazing, TBS, how did you invent such a thing? Why has the rest of the world not caught up? I don't know. The next thing to do is to power cycle this guy, with power it back up, and we should get a green LED. And again, that indicates we are bound. And that is gonna bring us to the end of this video. I'm trying to do these videos in bite-sized chunks with one major topic in each one so that you can sort of work your way through and follow along easily and so that they can be used as a reference if I ever need to show anybody how to do this stuff. So that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. The next video is in the playlist in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.